Hey, what's up? Youngster JPow with another video, and um, this is actually going to be uh, a bit of a different video compared to some of my, well, compared to all my uploads, really. Uh, this is a video explaining and basically give you a bit of a, an insight as to one of the VGC 2013 teams I have made um, that I also used uh, for VGC this year in the Birmingham Nationals. I have made a couple of changes since then, um, and I'll talk about them as and when. Um, yeah, I don't think I am going to do a completely different video on how my VGC went. Um, short answer is, not as well as, as I was hoping to. I mean, I spent hours working on all this shit, all this time, so many hours spent, um, you know, practicing, using battle simulators, reading about it, doing damage calcs. I put so much time into this team, and um, yeah, uh, it just didn't go very well. It, it worked as a, it was completely different to last year. Last year, there was... Um, you know, the VGC in Birmingham was you play until you lose, basically. And, and my friend lost his first game. Uh, I won my first two and then lost in the third. Um, but basically, you know, you could have one bad game, uh, as my, my friend did. You know, he got he lost uh, basically to, like, mixed man damage. And, you know, that was it. You know, we, we spent all year training for it, really. And then, you know, we, we go out of our way to attend them. Um, and you, you lose first battle, so I quite like the layout of how VGC 13 was this year, uh, where you play 9 battles and then the top 32 then go through to a knockout. Um, I didn't make the cut, I actually came 115th, I only won 5 of my 9 battles, um, well both my friends won 6 for 3. Uh, I really think I should have done a lot better, I think looking back, some of the games I played, uh, I, just, I just wasn't playing at my best at all. Um, but you know, that being said, um, it was a great day out and I met some awesome people. And, um, yeah, so, so this is my team. Um, just a quick, quick overview. I've got a Cresselia, um, who is bulky. I have a max special attack Heatran. I have a support, uh, bulky as fuck Salamence. I have a standard, uh, Mamoswine, a bulky Rotom, and then a, um, physical tornadoes. Um, so speaking about these in a lot more detail now, I'm going to be begin with um, I'm going to begin with Salamence, uh, just because Salamence is normally um, my most popular lead. Um, main reason for this is because he is my Latios counter. Um, I have run Scarf Ments a lot before, where uh, you stick a Choice Scarf on the Salamence, it can then outspeed. Um, it can outspeed Latios and then it can kill Latios with the Draco Meter before Latios kills him with the Draco Meter. Um, but then playing around, you know, I, I don't really like being choiced into one move um, where it is double battles and, you know, having to switch out is, is really hard. Um, where, well, yeah, where you only have two Pokemon to switch out to, really. Um, the battles are so quick as well, you kind of want to get a move off. Uh, instead of wasting a turn switching out, so that's the reason why I haven't gone for a scarf man. So I've tried out this Salamence, and um, it's worked really well. What it is, it's a basically a calm max special defense um, Salamence with a lot of uh, HP investment, um, which allows me with the Habanberry to survive a Dragon Gem boosted Draco Meteor from a timid Latios. Uh, that's not something you hear every day from a Dragon Pokemon. Um, but it is possible I've done my calcs and I can also survive after being fake out uh, by Hitmontop as well on the same turn. I've played quite a few battles and seen Hitmontops and Latioses as common leads. Um, and yeah, so this, this, this is really a great Pokemon. So I can do that. I can Oko with the Draco um, after surviving. Um, I can also set up a Tailwind. Um, that's one of the other moves that I've got. That is a great support move. It basically doubles. Uh, go away Microsoft. Uh, it basically doubles the um, the speed of all... Uh, I've no idea what this guy's doing here. Stop. 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 Okay. It basically doubles the, uh, the speed of all my Pokemon. Um, yeah, it just doubles the speed of all my Pokemon. Three turns. It lasts for three turns, I, I have twice as much speed, I can outspeed a lot of Pokemon, I can also then match Swift Swim Kingdra for speed um, with that Swift Swim ability. Um, the only downside is that it 
does only last for three turns and is fairly easy to stall out. But uh, we'll see you can stall out. I can predict that and then get a free switch in. Um, and even just being able to know when he is going to pre protect and when he isn't, you can double up on Pokemon. It's just a great move. Um, and then uh, this move here, Flamethrow. For my VGC, it was uh, Hidden Power Flying, and that was to counter Hitmontop. Um, but you'll find out later that I've got other checks for Hitmontop, and I, I really needed another fire type move. My, the only fire moves I do have on this team is from the Heatran. And there were a few battles where my Heatron died early on or I just didn't use him at all. And I really needed a fire type move you know, to take care of the likes of Sizzle and Metagross who are ever prominent in this tier. Um, and you can also see that, well, I don't know if you can see, um, but you might have saw in my last video that I had against Mike. Um, I actually had the Heat Wave instead of the Flamethrower. And um, you saw that he was able to then uh, save a Sizzle for another turn with the Wide Guard. And uh, I also don't really want to bother with Pokemon that have the Flash Fire abilities such as Heatran and Chandelure that they commonly use with uh, uh, with Sizzle basically and, and Metagross. So um, I've gone for the Flamethrower instead of Heat Wave at the moment. Um, it's worked for me, does its job, um, and the use of spread moves with Heat Wave is, isn't really um, as good in my opinion um, on Salamance that is. And, um, and its final move is Protect, and Protect is a move that you basically have to have on Pokemon in VGC. Um, it's just, just you just need it basically, is you can survive for another turn and uh, there's little your opponent can do about it. So, so that's my Salamence, it's got 212 HP EVs, 4 defense, 28 special attack, 244 special defense and 20 speed. Uh, with the Intimidate ability as well. The Intimidate does play a key role in my team. Um, as you'll find out that a lot of my Pokemon are more specially defensive uh, orientated because I am able to lower the opponent's attack with the Intimidate ability. So I'm going to move on to my next Pokemon now and that is my Tornadus. And the reason I'm saying this is because my Tornadus and my Sandlands, um are basically the two standard leads I have against a lot of the teams and the reason is because I can get the Intimidate off early with the Salamence as well as then being able to switch out and switch back in um, to reactivate the Intimidate and also after I've used Draco Meteor um, I can switch out and switch back in to get rid of that minus two special attack drop and uh, with Tornadus as well the my opponent might be thinking the same thing and lead off with his Intimidate users off very often it is hit on top and um, the reason why that's a good thing um, is because of this ability right here, the Defiant ability is amazing ability, it really is, it's, you know, it's completely dicked so many people that I've played against. And what it is, is when every time one of my stats is lowered by, um, or by a stage, um, my attack gets raised twice. So that basically means that every time you lower one of my stats, I get a free swords dance and it's just absolutely amazing. Um, I've been against players that lead with two Intimidate users, um, such as well, Salamance and Hit on top, which immediately puts me at plus two um, attack after the two attack drops. And I've also had people use Icy Wind against me, which puts me at minus one speed and plus two attack. So, is a threat to be reckoned with. And um, a Flying Gem boosted Acrobatics after a Defiant boost is just going to tear holes in any Pokemon. As you saw, um, easily able to take out the Tornadus. Um, in the previous battle. So that's kind of acrobatics uh, explained. Um, protect is there again as a staple move. Um, superpower is there for coverage and I have Taunt to uh, to help with other common leads such as uh, well, Cresselia and Pokemon that try to sap Trick Room teams as well. Um, it can be really helpful. Um, he's a jolly Pokemon. I've gone jolly over Adamant because I want to try and outspeed as many other Pokemon as I can. Um, and I don't really need the extra attack because I do get the, uh, well more, more often I do get the attack raise from the fight. So, um, so that's Tornadus, he, Tornadus and Salamence are um, a lot of the time my two leads. And um, I'm going to talk about my Cresselia now. Um, so yeah, this Cresselia, Cresselias are just basically so overpowered. Um, I actually did an international tournament in March I think it was. Um, where they had VGC over Wi-Fi um, using actual like DS's I suppose 
and um, I looked at some of the stats after I did the tournament and Cresselia was the most used Pokemon. I think he was in about 40% of all the teams which is just ridiculous, you know. Near enough 50% um, of the time you're going to be against the Cresselia and you're going to have to have something that can take care of it. And um, a lot of the time the Pokemon that do take care of it are Scizor and uh, Tyranitar. So, um, you can actually see I don't have either of them, but I'll, I'll talk about how I take down Cresselia's um, in a minute. So, again, Cresselia, great Pokemon. Um, great move ball, it can learn so many moves. You know, it can set up Trick Room, it can uh, cripple a Pokemon with Thunder Wave, it can lower their speed with Icy Wind, it can give you uh, a raise with Health and Hand. Health and Hand's a great move. You can set up Screens, Luna Dance, Magic Coat. Um, it's just a great Pokemon. Um, good recovery as well with Moonlight. Um, but the move set I've gone for for my Cresselia is Trick Room, Psy Shark, Ice Beam, and Skill Swap. Uh, Skill Swap is a great move. Um, so Trick Room is basically there to counter other Trick Room teams. Um, I don't want to set up Trick Room myself, um, but I have found that playing against Trick Room teams can be quite hard, seems though a lot of my team is fairly fast, um, such as my Salamence, my Tornadus, and my Mamoswine. Um, I even think Heat Heatran's got a little bit of a speed investment as well. Um, so yeah, Trick Room's there just to basically return the dimensions to normal um, uh, quicker than, than normal. I've gone for Psy Shock over Psychic because it hits Hitmontop harder. Um, Crusher is a great counter to Hitmontop. Um, Ice Beam's there for the Dragons um, as well as Landorus. And Skill Swap, um, it's kind of what makes my Cresselia a little bit different. Uh, the Skill Swap works great with Heatran um, because Heatran's, uh, well Heatran is times 4 weak to ground type moves and if I Skill Swap my own Heatran that means I give my own Heatran the Levitate ability meaning now that I completely get rid of that uh, weakness and my Heatran is, is free to, well, be safe from uh, from Earthquakes basically. Earthquakes are a really common move because they do hit all Pokemon on the field. Um, so yeah, that's good. It also works by uh, skill swapping on my own Salamence because they then get to reactivate the Intimidate and then further lower my opponent's attack by another stage. And then what I also did at uh, Birmingham, it completely threw my opponent off guard, um, was I, uh, I used skill swap on his Metagross, which then got rid of his Metagross's clear body ability. And I was then able to switch in my Salamence, which then lowered his attack, which went normally because Metagrosses normally have clear body. And then I skill swapped on my own Salamence to reactivate the Intimidate, allowing me to put his Metagross at minus two attack. Um, he, even, he complimented on me how good of a player it was, but he was the better player in the end and still managed to beat me. But um, it does work. I have used it and it has worked a lot in the past for me. So skill swap, great move. Um, quite underused, but that's kind of why it makes it so good. Um, it is very original. And um, yeah, I've, I've spoken a little bit about um, my Pokemon being more specially defense orientated. I do want them to be mixed to be able to take hits from all Pokemon. But as I said, after the Intimidate, um, my special defense does need to be the highest stat. So, I spoke about briefly being able to skill swap the Levitate onto my Heatran, um, which then gets rid of his weakness to uh, ground type moves. Um, then that still leaves him with a weakness to fighting and water type moves. Um, I gave him a triple berry to try and get rid of that weakness to fighting. Um, I can then survive um, the fighting moves quite easily then. Um, and then hopefully try and Oko that fighting type Pokemon on the same turn. Um, the moves I've got are Heat Wave, Earth Power and Hidden Power Ice. They're fairly stable, stable, um, staple moves on a Heatran, you know, they're quite, quite common. Great coverage, Heat Wave being the main move, uh, attacking, getting that stab, bonus. Um, Earth Power there for coverage to hit like um, the Rock and Steel type Pokemon as well as being able to hit um, other Heatrans as well. And the Hidden Power Ice are for the Dragons that, you know, don't take no shit. I've got the max special attack, um, this is one thing that really annoyed me, you know, I've got max special attack on my Heatran, it can't be any higher whatsoever, and it's 199, you know, can it not just be that extra stat higher and get to 200, but I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of it are again fairly balanced um, stats, I've got basically the same same stats um, in defense and special defense, uh, there's just two differences between the two. 
um, meaning that my defensive side is just as good as my special defensive side. Um, I then have a fair, well, a little bit of HP investment, and then I dump the rest into speed, um, so I can then outspeed some other Pokemon. Um, it's also one speed stat um, slower than uh, my Cresselia, which means I can skill swap with my Cresselia onto my Heatran before I can then set up a substitute. And substitute is the last move on my Heatran, which makes my Heatran, you know, absolutely amazing. They could uh, predict me to go for the Protect on that turn, so they would then focus both of their attacks on my other Pokemon. I then predict that, and then I get a free substitute up meaning that I am also uh, protected for another turn. Um, that's, you know, taken into account if they do manage to break my sub on the final turn. So, Substitute is a great move, should be used a lot more on Heatran. Um, and, yeah, so, I've spoken about Cresselia, and I've spoken about Heatran. Um, I've spoken about Salamence and Mamoswine. Mamoswine is the, the final Pokemon that you saw in my previous battle against Mike, um, where I was showcasing my team. I did speak about him a little there, I'm going to speak about him again now. He's just an absolute tank, you know. He's got a huge 200 stat at level 50. Um, he's adamant, max attack, max speed as well, being able to fire off and attacks quickly. I've, I've given him the thick fat ability which enables him to be able to take um, a lot more hits a lot easier and a lot nicer as well. Also gets rid of his uh, weakness to the ever so common heat wave. Um, and then with the Ice and Ground Typing, that means he has immunity to Sandstorm and Hail, meaning that I could be brought down to my Focus Sash and not have to worry about getting killed by residual damage from the weather. And I've given him the Focus Sash mainly because I, you know, I want a late game Pokemon to be able to come in, um, get an attack off, be brought down to my Focus Sash, and then hit them back with the priority Ice Shard. Um, so the moves are Earthquake, Icicle Spear, and Ice Shard. I've gone for Icicle Spear over Icicle Crash for the Pokemon that try and set up Substitute as well as um, the multi-scale Dragonite as well, um, who would otherwise be able to easily live a Ice School Crash from full HP. Um, Earthquake is going to hit any Pokemon hard that isn't either flying or has Levitate. Ice School Spear is going to hit the rest of the Pokemon hard um, that do have the Levitate and uh, the flying type. And then Ice Shard is to uh, pick off the weak Pokemon late game when I bring him in. And uh, you know, I've got to protect for, for reasons that I've mentioned before. So, Mamoswine, great Pokemon, massively underused. Um, he can be countered fairly easily, so I need to try and take out those threats early on in the game and then bring Mamoswine in to win the match. Um, and then my final Pokemon is my Rotom Wash. And um, Rotom Wash, I've played around with uh, quite a few Rotoms, and this is easily my most favourite Rotom by far. Um, it is uh, it's just such. An absolute monster and so hard for my op my opponent to try and take him down. You have no idea. Um, so he's, he's got max HP and he's a calm nature, the same as my Salamence, um, with a 108 special defense, uh, 108 special defense EVs, which puts him at 155 special defense uh, overall. Again, I've mentioned how I have special defense higher than defense uh, because I am able to get the intimidate off. And then I basically just dumped the rest in special attack to be able to hit my opponents hard. And uh, Rotom Wash is actually um, almost basically the, the completer of my team. You know, I made this team, and um, I did have Zapdos in its place, um, just because you know I, I absolutely love Zapdos. Zapdos over uh, Thunderous any day. Uh, back on that Gen One shit from Kanto, I absolutely love him. Um, but Rotom is there for my uh, Drizzle team counter. Um, or Rangeen's counter, um, and he does that job extremely well. He can uh, take hits, uh, the special defense, um, special attacking moves, really easily with uh, this amazing special defensive bolt, such as the Rain Dance boosted surfs and muddy waters that you see quite a lot. Um, and then I can also then further enhance that by setting up a light screen, which just um, completely trolls my opponent as uh, his uh, Rain Dance boosted surfs from his uh, Kingdra is doing like negative 3 HP against my Rotom, it is absolutely hilarious. Um, I've then got the Discharge um, on with the Electric Gem boost. Um, I did run Discharge when I first made this team because uh, Mamoswine and Rotom can work together, they synergize really well, um, as in what's weak to Mamoswine isn't is super effective 
um, what's weak to Mamoswine, sorry, uh, is not very effective on Rotom and vice versa. And I can also complete that Disquake combo with Earthquake, uh, teaming up with the Discharge and not being able to hit either of my uh, Pokemon. But um, for the actual day, I did have Thunderbolt instead of Discharge. I don't know if that was the right move, but um, that's what I went for. It basically comes down to your preference and what the rest of your team is. Um, so yeah, that does get the Electric Gem boost, which is going to hit um, all the Pokemon that are commonly seen on Rain, Rain Dance teams hard. Um, other than Gastrodon, and Gastrodon is quite common, so I have Hidden Power Grass um, for that. Uh, Hidden Power Grass, you know, staple, time for super effective against the Water and Ground type Pokemon. And then again, I've got Hydro Pump to uh, complete the Rotom Wash set, um, which also gets a, the boost from the Rain Dance. So, um, yeah, that's that's my team basically. Uh, I've explained it a lot. Um, they synergize really well with each other offensively and more importantly, defensively. Um, it's about you want to make a team that can not only hit your opponents hard but can also take. Um, hard hits from your opponent as well um, you know it's a two-way system you want to try and keep your Pokemon alive for as long as possible whilst trying to take out your opponent's Pokemon as quickly as possible and um, that's basically why VGC is one of my favorite tiers you know you have to pick four of these six Pokemon and um, I guess when it came down to the day I didn't pick the right four and I didn't step up to the plate so um, yeah my name is Youngster JPal. Uh, give us a like if you like the team, leave a comment if you have any alternative ideas to any of the sets that I have. Um, thumbs up for the Mirror Beam music in the background. Love that shit. Pokemon Coliseum, eat your heart out. And uh, I'm Youngster J-Power once again, and thanks for watching. Sweet.